I remember. I remember. I got it. Let him in. All right. So the name of today's class, we're going to jump right into it. So the name of today's class is repentance. Let go of the past. Let go of the past. You know, and that let go of the past is very, very vague because a lot of times when 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 we think about the past or the or the shoulda coulda wouldas and and all of that stuff that goes into letting go of the past that goes into letting go of the past it's a very vague statement for this particular class all right let's jump into it Romans chapter 15 and verse 4 as usual let's go through it right quick Romans chapter 15 verse 4 for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, uh -huh. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So through the scriptures, we get our comfort. All right, go ahead. Now is that the, in that verse? Yes, sir. That's in that verse. All right. So now, so through the scriptures, we get our comfort. And like I said, the class is called repentance. So it's going to be, it's a basic class. But then, we, of course, you still got to be reminded of these things because of the stuff that we like to fabricate in our minds and things like that. And we come into the truth and we just because we walk in the doors, we feel like we've already repented or whatnot. When no, we are repenting. We are in a process. It's not just something just because you sit in the chair inside the congregation, you ain't automatically good. You're not automatically good. Uh, let's go to Hebrews 5 and 12. Hebrews 5 and 12. Let's read that. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Uh -huh. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, mm -hmm. which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And this, so this scripture is continuous. We will constantly be taught over and over and over again. The same things over and over and over again. And when we come into the truth, we have to let go of those things that we was dealing with in the truth outside in the world. And then we come in these doors. Don't think you got it. It, it ain't all you ain't got it. Got it made yet. You, trust me. You ain't got it made yet. You still struggling with different stuff. Just like uh, we was going over on the Sabbath, how you have people that come into the truth. And because they know a bunch of precepts, they don't have any understanding on how to apply the precepts. So that's why we're going over repentance, because repentance is a process. It is not something that you just do. And it's just. When you walk in the doors, I'm an Israelite. That's it. And you good. That's that's not how that goes. Uh, let's go to let's go to first Kings. First Kings 847. We'll start there. Yes. Finish the verse. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Finish the verse. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, uh -huh. which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. And that's where we at. We all are, con are in constant need of milk, which is the basics. Let's get that. Let's get the milk, Deuteronomy. Let's get that for anyone that don't know the precept to what the milk is. What the milk is. Let's go to Deuteronomy 6, I believe that's right. Verse 1, and then jump down to verse 7, I believe. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land where you go to possess it. So it's the commandments. The commandments, that's what we have to learn, and then we, and then we, and that's what God taught us. That's what Moses taught us was the commandments of God. Go down, verse 7. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. It says we should teach them to our children. So they not going to understand, the children ain't going to understand deep stuff in the Bible. That's why we stick with thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt uh, uh, not commit adultery. Those different things like that. Thou shall remember the Sabbath day. We teach our children the basics, which is the milk. Go ahead. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Uh -huh. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way. And when thou liest down. And when thou risest up. And we have to teach it all the time to our children. That is why even in, in Hebrews 5 and 12... We got to be taught again. We have to be taught That's this right. over and over and over again. That's why the Bible is very repetitive, very repetitive. And that's because we are a hard-headed people. But we, when we walk in the doors, some of us forget that we hard-headed. 
So then when something comes out, we don't understand how to process it because we feel like we made it just because we walk in the doors. Where, matter of fact, to prove that we ain't made it, check, go to uh, Revelations. Revelations 2 and the last three, the last three verses. You can say endure. Matter of fact, just one verse. Uh, let's see, let's see this. 26. Yep. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Uh -huh. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end. Until when? Until the end. Until when? Until the end. He said, until the end. The end ain't here. We it, it ain't over. We all still breathing and walking, and we right here in our captivity right now. So it ain't over. So when we walk in the doors, repentance didn't end. Repentance just started when we walk in the That's doors. Go right. ahead. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end. Until the end. To him will I give power over the nations. And that's what we all want. But we have to remember, we have to keep the commandments unto the end. So it's not something that we just, that when we walk in the door, that we got it all made. No, no, no. This is going to be something that we're constantly doing. That's why even when you're reading in the scriptures, what Bishop didn't bring it out, we're not going to touch it. They could take us everywhere. Where then you have, when those seven spirits leave, or that spirit leave, then it comes back. That doesn't just happen one time. It happens over and over again to see if you're studying, to see if you are filling your mind with the Bible, with the laws of God. Or are you filling your mind with TV and all the different things that are distract you and start to make you think of the stuff that you may have missed out, that, that you feel like you missed out on or the things you feel like you were still doing back in the world. So we're going to talk about that repentance and letting, that, letting those things go, because if you don't, it's going to kill you. You're going to drop dead. You're going to die that second death. You might die. You might die. You're going to die a horrible death here. And then you're going to die a worse death when you're dead. So, you ready? You good? Yes, All praises. All right. Let's go to, let's go to, uh, let's go to Romans, Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. I know I told you, I told you to go somewhere else first. I already didn't skip it. Romans 12 and 2. Try not to not to have a long class. We'll see. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Uh -huh. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So it says that we have to be transformed. We cannot be conformed to this world. So the stuff of this world, like the porn, the 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 clubbing, the the slothfulness is of this world. That's why, that's, why, that's why a lot of our brothers and sisters are walking around two, three hundred pounds overweight. Slothfulness is of this world. What is it? America has is the most obese country on the planet. Boy, ain't no way, boy. So even the fact that we don't even care about what we eat, we have conformed to this world. So this right here says, read that again from the top. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Uh -huh. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. Don't take on the different things that the world is trying to get us to do. Uh, uh, going out here in the club, buying and shopping on the Sabbath days, working and stuff on the Sabbath day. And then, then we, we'll do it and won't have no conscience about it. All because we feel like we already made it just because we congregate with IUIC. I congregate. I'm good. No. If you still are here breaking the commandments, no, you, you still have all of us got stuff we got to work on. That's why the class is called repentance. Let go of those things of the past. So those things that we used to do, we cannot do them. We was once a part of the world. Then it tells us be not conformed to the world. Go ahead. That's right. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we must have a changing of our mind. Go ahead. That ye may prove what is that good. And acceptable and perfect will of God. And we're trying because whenever we change our mind, we're proving what is that good and acceptable will of God. Uh, somebody come off mute. Uh, one of the brothers, a brother, a non ranked brother, come off mute and tell us what scripture is the will of God. I don't care who it is. Shalom. Shalom. Uh, Psalms 40 and 8. Let's read that. Let's read the will of God. Psalms chapter 40, verse 8. Uh huh. I delight to, to do thy will, O oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So the will of God is the laws of God. 
the will of God is the laws of God. So we have to be transformed. Our minds have to change when we come in here. And it's not something that's going to happen overnight because when I first walked in the door, I didn't know. I didn't even know about tabernacles. I ain't know about no feast days. How are we going to keep them if we don't know? So it's not something you're going to do and learn overnight. Also, whenever y'all feel like putting images up, no hesitation. It's all good. Y'all do what you do. You know what I'm saying? So those things, whenever we come into the truth, we have to transform our minds to what the Bible says. And that's something we're going to be doing regularly. It's something that we should be doing regularly. Put it that way. Something we should be doing regularly. All right. Let's go to, uh, yeah, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. And then after that, Second Peter uh, 3 and 9, going through some basic precepts that I know a lot of the men should have already. Um, but if you don't have them, make sure you write them in your Bibles. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, uh -huh. by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. It said being born again, not of a corruptible seed. They said, but of incorruptible by the word of God. Because, and then it said, which liveth and abideth forever. That's why you incorruptible. We all want that immortality to live forever. But we cannot do so if we're not transformed by the word of God, which is forever. Think about it. How are, you gonna, how are we going to not keep the commandments in this world thinking we're going to get the kingdom when the commandments will still be there in the kingdom? So we have to repent and train ourselves now. That's why we're practicing the righteous acts right here in our captivity. But That's we still right. have to renew our minds and be changed. Let's go to Second Peter's now, three and nine. Second Peter chapter three verse nine. Uh huh. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, mm -hmm. as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward. So it said, "The Lord is not slack." So the Lord gonna do what He said. What he promised, he's going to do, just like we all ended up in captivity because he promised if we we just read it. If we didn't keep the commandments, he would look, if we keep the commandments, I'll bring all the I won't bring all the disease on you. But we know we didn't keep the commandments. Now, literally, literally in South Carolina, in Colombia, it is, I think, blow my mind. Fifty percent of the blacks in South during their 50 percent got diseases. All because we won't keep the commandments. Go ahead. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, mm -hmm. but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish. So the Lord don't want us to die. He promised us that we would get the kingdom if we repent, but he also promised us judgment if we don't keep the commandments. And he's going to do exactly what he said, but he's doing so and being patient with us because he don't want us to perish. Go ahead. But that all should come to repentance. And that all that should come to repentance, that is Israel, shall come to repentance. Matter of fact, let's get to Acts 5.31. Because then you'll have, you have brothers and sisters talking about what well, that means everybody. Or the Christian that's listening to it, that, that means everybody could be saved. No, no. So we're going to read that. Let's read that. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Bring it out. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. Uh-huh. For to give repentance to Israel uh -huh. and forgiveness of sins. For to give repentance to Israel. So the only ones that's going to repent is the Israelites. That's, that's us, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's it. Not everybody. So whenever you're reading that scripture in Peter, it does not mean everybody on the planet. Just to make sure or make sure nobody's confused about, about what's going on. All right? That's now, right. A uh, few more of those precepts. Let's go to John 3 and 3. John 3. Like I said, these are precepts we've heard, we've heard before. We're going to jump into some different things here in a second. John chapter 3, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So it said we must be born again. So we cannot continue to hang on to the things we was doing before. We cannot hang on to those things. Those things will destroy us. They'll kill us because a lot of us was on social media and all of that crap back then. 
just just blowing time. And then we come into the truth and then we'll keep the commandments for a couple of years or so. And then we start thinking about the stuff that we feel like we're missing out on because we see what other people are doing in the world. Not understanding those people in the world want to be you. They want to be you. But the Lord didn't choose them. He didn't wake them up yet. Some of them are going to be woken up. But you're woke now. But you can also put your light out by not keeping the commandments. And then you'll end up like the very people that you're sitting there considering and thinking about what they're doing and, and, and seeing all the what we call what you call fun because they in sin. Sin is pleasurable. So it looks like they're having a good time. Yet and still, you got all these what what they call these women five or what or four or what now, huh? Four one, look three o oh, four. There you go. Look, I don't know you. Y'all gotta help me. What is it again? Three o oh, fours. You got all these women at three o oh, fours or whatever. Look, they out here just being they hoes. I'm just telling you what it is. They are sleeping around, doing what they want to do, and then they want to wait until they're 60, 50 some years old talking about they want to get married. Come on, man. What you got? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, let's read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 25. So re- Hebrews 11, 25. Hebrews 11, 25. Go ahead. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God uh-huh. than to enjoy the pleasures of sin. For a season. So this right here was Moses. Moses had money. He was rich and everything. He was raised up under Pharaoh. But it said that he was he would rather suffer suffer with his brethren, even though what read that again? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. No, start read up a little. Read the whole thing. Okay. Twenty four. Yep. Read the whole thing. Gotcha. Verse twenty verse twenty three. No, the verse that you just read. Oh, that was? Okay. Yeah. Verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God mm-hmm. than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Because sin is pleasurable. It's telling you right there, sin feels good. It's fun. But it only lasts for a short season. Moses was willing to throw away all of that because, and suffer with his own people. Because he understood the gift that he would get at the end was way greater than anything anybody else could give him on earth. And that's how our mindset got to be changed. Because we true, some of us truly believe we straight. Some of us truly believe that we are good. And that's why repentance is very difficult for us to do. And some, or we'll do something right for a little while and then we'll start to consider to go right back into the world. All right, let's go to... Uh, yeah, let's go to mm, Mark, Mark 721, Mark 721. Let's go to Mark 721. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Uh-huh. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, mm-hmm. adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Go ahead. All these things come from within and defile the man. So it says, out of our heart, which is our mind, can become a comes evil thoughts. And all the evil thoughts is in our minds is what we just read. All of the blasphemy, the fornication, the murder, the lasciviousness, the covetousness, the pride, all of those things come from our minds. And then we create idols. In our minds. Let's get that in Ezekiel. Ezekiel uh, Ezekiel 14 and 3. Ezekiel 14 and 3. And these idols that we have, that lust that we have, that's why you'll find yourself on the phone, on social media all day. Or find yourself on, uh, on the phone at night while your wife laying there right next to you and you on the phone looking at other people. Because you're starting to think, you know what, man, if I was out in the world, you know, I could have had any girl I wanted to. I could do anything I want to. I got my life together. I got my own house now. While your wife's sitting right there next to you. And you're thinking about everything else in the world that you could actually have instead of understanding. Look, that if even if you, if you go out here and do this, you're going to mess your life up. You're going to mess it up. 
Let's go. You got it? Ezekiel uh, 14. 14 three. Yes, sir. Ezekiel chapter 14, <clears throat> verse 3. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 3. Uh-huh. Son of man, these men have set their, up their idols in their heart uh-huh. and put the Hold stump. On, read that again. Read that again. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. Go Jump up one. Verse, verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. So men set up, letting you know we put idols in our own mind and set up idols in our own mind. A lot of times the brothers would be like, I'm struggling with slothfulness, I'm struggling with slothfulness. But what they doing, they on the phone and they dealing with lust and then time done rolled by. They doing something, they just ain't doing what they supposed to be doing. If you know what I mean. They, they doing something. <laughs> they just ain't doing what they supposed to be doing. Read that again. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart uh-huh. and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. So they put a own, their own stumbling block in front of their face because they're starting to think about the different things that they could be doing, the different things they used to do in the world. So they're not able to fo- they're not able to repent of it because they keep looking back at it all the time and putting it right back in their face. They hold the phone or the computer or what have you. And the different stuff they're looking at, whether they're chasing money, trying to have the biggest co- the next come up, or whether they're looking at the next big booty woman online or whatever. And sisters do the same thing. Y'all y'all do the exact same thing. Y'all sit up there and be looking at other men and everything, talking about, you know, my husband is out of shape. You know, I flipped it, you know, because we always talking about the, the sisters out of shape. Men's burning the fat out here. We out here running, bro. You know what? Well, we going to talk about it. We is going to flip it back, you know. Brothers is sitting up in there, you know, looking at the thing because they looking, their wives is out of shape. And their wife ain't trying. And now you have the husband online looking at looking at the woman or the shape that he like or whatever he think he so called like. Bruh. As the wife sitting right there next to him now, and he put it right in his face, put the iniquity right in his face. Come on now, dog. But like I said, you women, y'all do the same thing. Y'all sit up there, my husband, he ain't making enough money for me. So y'all go and look at all the men online that, got all, that you used to go to high school with that may own their own business or it appear that they doing better than what your husband is doing. Mind you, you got food on the table. You got a roof over your head. You got clothes on your back. But you want extra. I want to travel. I want the Mercedes Benz. So what you do, you go and look at everything online or as to what you want, and you start to be distracted by those things and put the iniquity in your own face. Read that scripture the on the top this? again. Verse 2, and the word of the Lord came unto uh, me. Verse 3. Verse 3. Mm-hmm. Set, son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart mm-hmm. and put a stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Uh-huh. Should I be inquired of? Of at all by them. So that's what the Lord is saying. It's like, should I be acquired of them at all? How you gonna call on the Lord and you and you and you dibbling and dabbling in, in your sin and not not changing your mind? You just you come sit in the congregation, but then you go home and you're not even convicted about what you're doing. And what it's going to lead to eventually, you're going to go out there and sleep with that woman. Or you're going to go out there and sleep with that man. And then you're going to see how jacked up your life could have, it's really going to be. Because you literally got, you sitting up here looking at everything. The sin was pleasurable for a couple of minutes. Now you're behind. Now you're going to lose your whole family and your house and everything else that you thought wasn't good enough. Because you weren't content with it, it's going to be gone. And because you flirt around with it, that's what's going to happen to you. Go to uh, Romans 13 and 3. Because all these things happen because it's right here. All these things happen. 13 and 3. Romans 13. No, not 13 and 3. Uh, 13, 13. Romans chapter 13, verse 13. Yes. Let us walk honestly as in the day, mm-hmm. not in rioting and drunkenness. It said let us walk honestly because we're not being honest with ourselves. We'll lie to ourselves and say, I ain't got no problem. I'm straight. I ain't do the act just because we ain't do it just because you don't do the act just because we don't go out here and actually execute the stuff you sit up there and then we'll say I'm good because I didn't go do it. No, you actually should be like, why the heck did I even have that thought? 
Why did I even start thinking like that? So what we got to do is get rid of the thoughts, change the minds. It said conform your minds, change your mind. Go ahead. Let us walk honestly as in the day, uh -huh. not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, uh -huh. not in strife and envying. Go ahead. But put ye on the Lord Jesus. And hold on, hold on, hold on. So the end of 13, it said not in strife and envying. Some of us, some of our people in the truth envy those that's not in the truth. And I ain't saying you envy them because they're rich. No, you envy them because it look like they having fun. Dang, you know, my cousin and my sister and them, they still sleeping around and going to the club. I remember when I used to do that. And it was fun, too. I enjoyed that thing. Now I got a husband. Shoot. Sometimes I don't even want food with them. You know, they, they got her. They look like they living their best life. They got all the cars. They got money on camera and everything. And I ain't got nothing. We struggling to get by. Some of our people envy people that's not in the truth. Some of you in the truth envy people that ain't that don't even know God. You envy them. Message. Because you want to you want to be in their position. While in a couple of years, they going to want to be in yours and they going to be. And then look, and, and shoot, some sisters go and even get marriage counselor from them and then end up without a husband and then want to know what the heck happened. And then that the sister end up taking your darn husband from you. Read on verse 14, verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ uh -huh. and make not provision for the flesh and make not provision for the flesh. Go ahead to fulfill. The lust thereof. Because it's all lust. It said, make no provision for the flesh. In order for you to be able to do this, you have to know yourself. You have to know what makes you get into that mind frame of, I think I want to go back into the world. Or this is fun. Or what will have you stuck in front of the phone all day. Or what will have you stuck on TV all day. You have to know yourself to be able to do this. In order for you not to make provision for the lust that you deal with, you have to know yourself. Some brothers will go to work, have the sister that's flirting with them, and then will continue to flirt with them. You know what? I, I, could, I could talk draws off any sister in the world. Some brothers feel like that in the truth. It's like, why, why would you feel that way in the truth when... We try why what you want to make you want to make more whores out of our sisters or what? You know, I could talk the draws off any woman. Bruh. Why would we be talking like that after we done been in the truth for years? Well, sisters like, you know what, I can have any man I want to. See, the problem is you can have any man you want to. The problem is you can't have any 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 uh uh top G you want to. You can have any, right. any Tom, Dick, and Harry out there. Yeah, they'll put Rod in you and give you a disease, and you and then they'll say you're welcome, and you'll be thanking them for the crap. Message. Thank you. It was a good time. It was a good night. As you walking around burning and stuff. The hell is this? And then you'll want that top G that's in the truth to take care of your behind. Or the brothers or want that sister that's going to kill them. Shoot, Hell brothers, nah. brothers will have a house in there, got darn thing, and then want to go and dibble and dabble and flirt with that sister, and then, then she get them, and now she pregnant, she finna take everything from you, because you finna come up off the child support. Crazy. So the house you once could afford, you might not be able to no more. All because you make provision, and you was playing around with it, sticking to it. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom.
get close to it. Let's go to Sirach, matter of fact. Sirach 21 and 2. Because you stick close to it. And the scripture tells us not to do that. 21 and shoot, read one with it. Sirach chapter 21, verse 1. My son, has thou sinned? Do so no more. Uh -huh. But ask pardon for thy former sins. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We all sin. It said, hey, my son, have thou sinned? Some of us won't admit that we're sinning. How do you repent when you don't even admit to yourself that you're in sin? So how are you going to go to the Lord and ask for pardon for those sins when you yourself have convinced yourself that you ain't do nothing wrong, even though you've been flirting with this sister, you've been flirting with that brother, you've been uh, uh, on the phone watching porn, you've been on the phone watching, uh, look, looking at lusting for all the men that you want, lusting for all the women that you want. You won't even admit to yourself that you're going off, that you got a covetous mindset of nothing. You won't even say it to yourself. How are you going to go to the Lord and ask him to pardon for him when you don't even admit it to you? And then it says, but ask pardon for thy former sins. Ask pardon for your former sins. It's not something you're supposed to keep doing. That's why I said former. Go ahead. Read verse 2. Verse 2. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. Mm -hmm. It for said flee from sin as though it was a poisonous snake. Instead of sticking close to it, it said run from it. Just, you know, black people. Man, you, you, we can't even see a goddamn bug in the house. I mean, we be sitting there swinging and trying to run out the goddamn door. So imagine it's a poisonous snake sitting right there. Mother's is gone. <laughs> Mother's is, look, my wife just told me the other day, you know, she's pregnant. Can't go no goddamn where. Talk about, shoot, I heard something. I was about to be gone. Bruh. Ain't heard, and ain't going to run nowhere sliding across the floor. Ain't going nowhere. But our people don't have that mindset towards sin, though. You know what? I, I know the big booty sister going to be at the job. I'm going, I'm, you know what? I'm going to get clean, come up in that mug so she want me even more. Or you know what? The sisters that come in there, they'll be dressed amongst us. They'll be all nice and modest. And then they go to their corporate job when they're out there in the streets. Now, all of a sudden, they got the little tight little skirt on because it's the man at the job that they're trying to attract. Because don't none of us work there with them. So then you start looking at those things that you used to do because you used to dress like that before. You know, before you would have had that dude, you'd have probably already slept with him by now. So now you just wearing the clothes and you're just flirting right now, thinking nothing's going to come of it. But you are eventually going to fall in those sins because you keep playing around with it because you're not running from it as though it's a serpent. So those thoughts in your mind while you're at home and you're like, you know what? I'm going to wear this when I go to work. I, I, you know, I like the attention. I like the attention that I'm getting. You know, I'm a single mother in the truth. I ain't married. I don't I don't I want to get married. But all the men that I had access to before, I don't. I don't want to fool with them, but those men, they ain't got those men in the truth. That's how sisters be thinking. And then they got child, children, so they, they literally go into that mindset of being, am I ever going to get married? Be patient. Keep the commandments. But instead of, instead of our women wanting to do that, they start thinking about, man, I'm finna go back into the world because I could have had sex with him, 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 or already had a man by now or whatever, what have you. But they wouldn't have been keeping the commandments, so your behind would have been out there in the world with him. And ain't no, hey, hey, what it say, ain't no honor amongst thieves. Ain't no honor amongst thieves. They done stole your money. They done stole your house and everything else. They don't care because they ain't got nothing governing them. Let's read. Read verse 2 again from the top. Verse 2. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. Go ahead. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. It will bite thee. Go ahead. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slaying the souls of men. Your soul going to be destroyed. Because you want to stick close to the sin and make provisions for it, your soul is going to be destroyed. But I, but I don't want. But we don't understand that. That's why when we come into the truth, we are very, very 
we we feel like you know I repented because I walked in, not understanding this is a process. Those thoughts are gonna return. It's gonna come back. You have to continue to fight the whole time. All right. Uh, go to go to First John two fifteen. First John two fifteen. First John chapter two verse fifteen. Go ahead. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So we cannot love the world. So ain't no need you trying to be in the world. Because if you want to be in the world, God ain't in you. You want the kingdom, so you say. That's what we say. I want to get the kingdom. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, his might, his might. And then everybody all hype. And then we leave and go right back to the world. Read on. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes. That's, 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 the big, that's a big thing for us. We like what we see, not understanding what's behind it. That's why you own the phone. That's why you own a computer, because you see it. That's why you're coveting him, because you see it. Instead, you ain't reading the Bible. Uh, you ain't studying. You ain't doing four chapters and none of that. You, you just evil. But you won't even say it to yourself. Well, I ain't did nothing. I ain't do the act, though. I didn't act on it. But you already thinking it. Like Christ said in, in, in uh, was it Matthew 5? Like he said in Matthew 5, to look up on a maid and to start lusting and thinking about having said you already did it. Reason why you already did is because that's what it's going to lead to if you don't check it. Same thing go for you, sisters. Y'all sitting up there thinking about it, too. Y'all got you. Look, some, some of you hate your husbands. Some of you actually hate your husbands. And it's crazy. It's crazy how you will have a brother that will go work hard all day. You know what I'm saying? He'll go work hard all day. Come home, and the sister won't even, won't even look like she looked like she just got out of bed. That's how she looked. She won't dress up for him. But if she go to work, she dress up for everybody else outside. But at home, she looked like she just got up out of bed. Her, her darn gone, you know, the nightgown that people like to wear the gray, uh, it's the gray sweat joint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yo, yo, it be the gray sweat joint. It look like sweat. It's, it's thin and it's ripping and stuff. That's what they were around their husband. You know <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. And the bonnet, and they got the bonnet. It ain't even her wrap. It's not wrap no more. It's just the bonnet that's it's just sitting there. You know what I'm saying? Look, they turn their head, it moved too. <laughs> that's what sisters do. But if they go to work or go outside, they cold. They dressed up all nice. The husband talking about in the morning. Damn. You look good. And he ain't going to see her for eight hours. Yeah, that's what they, there it is. Dang, God, dang. Yeah, you got to put it on the screen. That's how they be at the house, bro. Sitting there looking like Medea, bro. What the hell is this? Unbelievable. <laughs> sisters be at the house like that right there. And the thing is, you have sisters that will even get counsel from sisters. Like, look, dress up for your husband. And sisters Bruh. just ignore it. Not understanding because you're ignoring it. Because you're ignoring it. Look, take it off, man. You got all the people laughing, man. <laughs> Look, you got, you have the sisters that'll be at home like that. And sometimes they get counsel to to dress up nice for your husband. You Look, when he come home or in the morning, you get up early, you dress up nice for him. And that's how you are every day. Because you know if you was out in the world working, look, look, you even got a man that don't even require you to work. And you won't dress up for him. But I can guarantee you, if you had to go to work, you'd be looking nice trying to go to work. Message. And then you wonder why he's starting to make provisions. Because you yourself is starting to look online yourself and you coveting what everybody else is doing. Because the life that you have is not good enough. So now you're looking at stuff online and you like, I ain't doing that. I ain't going here. I'm not going there. I'm not, I don't have these things. So I'm just going to be mummified. I'm going to look like a darn mummy at the house. While your husband is going out here busting his behind trying to provide. And now because you're not holding up your end, now he's starting to consider. I could, I could have any one of these women. 
So you will have those different things going on where then the sisters will be like, well, why my husband don't want to fool with me? Shoot, you look like Hattie Mae at the house. Shoot, he at work every day. You got sisters dressed up at work, and they offering him food. He turned it down, turned it down. But then because after a while, because you won't do it for him, now he like, well, well let me taste the food. Then he tastes the food. Now they're exchanging phone numbers. Now she's asking him what he want tomorrow. And those different things come back around. They, they don't just go away. So in order for you not to have those things in the mind, in your mind, and in your husband's mind if you're married, why don't you do everything you possibly can to be right so he ain't looking nowhere else? It's likewise for the men. But, you know, sometimes our people don't want to do that. Second edge 16. Yeah, second Ezra 16 and 67, 67. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 67. Go ahead. Behold, God himself is the judge. Uh -huh. Fear him. Leave off from your sins. Go ahead. And forget your iniquities. And forget your iniquities. To meddle no more with them forever. To do what? To meddle no more with them forever. And that said to meddle with them no more forever. So while you win this truth, you're supposed to be building yourself up. Like Bishop brought out in Jew, we have to build ourselves up to where as those things come, we can see it coming from a mile away. That's right. We can see it coming from a mile away. Oh, no, here comes that same trial. I remember this one. Oh, no, no, I remember the big booty woman at work. That's just a different one. Now she dark, she dark skin instead of light skin this time. No, 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 no. Make sure I stay off over there. You see it coming from a mile away. Or sister be like, oh, here come the tall, dark, handsome brother. You know, I don't think they like light-skinned brothers no more. They don't like my type no more. It is what it is. You know, they like the tall, dark-skinned brothers now. You know? No, I ain't light-skinned. I've been out there in the sun, bro. Been out there at camp, bro. Getting it in, man. You know? That's, 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 uh, that's the other brother in the congregation. He by himself. Let's also get a light in them. They by themselves. I'm not with that team no more. Bruh. But that's what it is. Read that again. Read it again. 67. <laughs> Behold, God himself is a judge. Fear him. Mm -hmm. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities mm -hmm. to meddle no more with them forever. So don't meddle with your sins forever. So the lifestyle you left, don't meddle with it no more. The old phone numbers and the old contacts that you had, some of the young people come in, they had Instagram, and I ain't got no Instagram. So Muzz exchanging Instagrams and crap. No, leave, all of them should have been deleted. Don't go back looking for them again. Trying to refollow them. Resend them messages. You know, hey, where you been? I ain't seen you in, a, in about five years. Yeah, I'm in the truth. I'm in the truth. Yeah, keeping the commandments. Well, what you reaching out to them for and they not? Read on down. Finish that. So shall God lead you forth uh -huh. and deliver you from all your trouble. It, it said God will lead you forth and deliver you from all your trouble. So all of the trouble that, that's out there, you'll be delivered from it. Shoot, child support is a trouble. Yo behind ain't got no kids. Why in the world would you go out here and go have one? With somebody that ain't in the truth and they're going to definitely put you, on, put you on child support. Now you're worried about going to jail because then they're going to get you fired. Because you can't look either way. Look, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. You have a brother in the truth. It's a sister at the job or a sister wherever. He meet her out and about, right? He meet her out and about. He, if he goes out here and mess with the sister, we going to put him out. He, in order for you to come back, you still have to leave the sister alone or marry the sister because you fornicated. Now, the sister was never a part of truth. She don't want to keep the commandments. So you, you got to leave her alone. Why? But now she's pregnant now. So now you got to pay child support. Versus why don't you just not mess with her from the beginning and cut her off from the beginning? Then you don't have those troubles. Why not just do that? Likewise, sisters. Why do you go out here, you want a man so bad because you're in the truth and ain't nobody proving you? Not yet. Now you go out here and you have sex with a brother. The brother don't want to have nothing to do with the truth. 
you get pregnant and now you can't get married in her because now you got to marry him or you don't get pregnant you get a disease or you don't get a disease you get put out but now everybody that would have proved you know that's why you was put out now you come back now the now the chance of you proving anybody has gone drastically down and you still have to cut that man off so why not cut him off from the beginning and save yourself all that trouble but our people don't understand that that's what God's laws do for us. So whenever we come into the truth, we don't understand. I need to let all that stuff I used to do go. So all these troubles that I would have been into, I ain't got to worry about it. Because like I said, some brothers feel like, you know, they got married and they were young or they come into the truth while they was young. And they like, man, I could have I could have had this woman. I could at least slept. You know, I missed out on a bunch of experiences. You know what? I could have slept with four or five women before I came into this truth and then been celibate. Same thing go for the sisters. The sisters be feeling like that too. They missing out on the world. When you ain't missing out on anything, you're not missing out on nothing. Uh, let's go to let's go to Colossians. Proverbs 71. Proverbs no, Colossians, Colossians 3 and 5. Colossians 3 and 5. I'm sorry. Proverbs 28. I know I'm skipping around. Proverbs 28, 13. Proverbs 28 and 13. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Go ahead. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Mm -hmm. But whoso confesseth and forsake of them, shall have them shall have mercy. So it say, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. So while you in here covering up the fact that you lusting next to your wife, you lusting next to your husband, or you out here, you done already committed during adultery. You just ain't said nothing. And everything just going left in your life because you ain't, you ain't confessed it. Or you out here slothful, so you say. You're slothful when it comes to the work of the Lord, but you're not slothful when it comes to the work of the world. So you're not doing what you're supposed to do, but you're doing something. But you're doing what the world wants you to do. And you're not confessing those sins. You're not coming forth. You're not admitting. You're not even admitting it to yourself. And then you're not going to the most high to admit it either. And then you're not putting them away. You're still hanging on to those things just in case it don't work out in the truth. I don't even know. I've heard brothers say that before. I don't even know what that means. What you mean just in case it don't work out in the truth? Well, why wouldn't it work out in the truth? huh? That all it is is, look, keep the commandments. We gonna be corrected a thousand times as the correction comes. Do follow what the correction says. Keep the commandments over and over again. That's it. What the hell is this? And the only way it don't work out is you leave. So what do you mean if it don't work out in the truth? What are you trying? What are you working? What What are you trying to do? You trying to make see see you know when I hear that statement I start thinking stuff. Is this brother trying to make money off the people? And because he don't get rich off the people, it didn't work out. Well, what about the sister? It didn't work out in the truth. Oh, you didn't get a husband in four years. So it didn't work out. So you was like, I'm going to come in there. I'm going to be here for four years. If I don't get no husband by then, I'm going back into the world. My mic went out. Hey, Lord. Can y'all still hear me online? That joint do sound funny. Test, 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 test. Mine they said they can still hear me. Do I still sound loud or it sound like it went low? Mine's still low too. Okay. Well, no, we good. It's just a speaker then. All right. So it ain't it ain't it ain't everybody else. All right, cool. But that's what it is. And brothers and sisters be like, oh, it didn't didn't work out. I don't even know what in the world that means. Uh, was that it on that verse? Uh, let's see, let's see. Yes, sir. Yep, that's it on that verse. That was uh, what was we at? Proverbs twenty eight thirteen. Proverbs twenty eight thirteen. Read it again. Proverbs chapter twenty eight verse thirteen. Uh huh. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsake of them shall have mercy. So you have to confess your sins and forsake them, meddle with them no more forever. That's what that's saying. It said that's how you get mercy. Go to Colossians, Colossians uh, 3. Matter of fact, uh, Baruch, Baruch 4 1. Baruch 4 1, I believe that's what I want. Uh yes, Baruch 4 1. 
Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. Uh huh. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endured forever. Go ahead. All they that keep it shall come to life. Uh huh. But such as leave it shall die. It said, All they that keep the commandments and endureth shall come to life. It said, Endureth forever. So the law is going to be here forever. And then it says, All they that keep it shall come to life. So the only way that you the first time you was alive in your whole life was when you started keeping the commandments. So while you at her thinking and looking at what everybody else is doing in the world, you looking at dead people envying dead people. You want to be like them. While they're complaining, they can't be like you. All of these uh, 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 304s, as they calling them now. All of them, they talking about ain't no good men out there. Why you got one? And you looking at dead people wanting to be them. Or the men wanting to be, uh, uh, what is it? What is it? The, uh, what's the brothers that's going overseas? What they call the brothers? Passport bros. You know, I could travel overseas and sleep with all these women and come back. And then when I want to settle down, then I'll get a wife. But I can go over there and they're going to worship me overseas. I could travel over there and I can afford it because I could pay for just me to go. And then I can come back and go back to work. And then when I do want to sit down, I go over there and stay in my 50s and 60s. While you got kids running all over the goddamn place you don't know. And you're literally watching brothers, dead men in the spirit, and you want to be dead like them. Unbelievable. Is that on that verse? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go to let's go to let's go to let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs seven and one. Like I said, they they those that keep the commandments, they live. So another precept for that. Proverbs seven and one. Proverbs chapter seven, verse one. Uh huh. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Uh huh. Keep my commandments and live. Keep the commandments of God and live. Go ahead. And my law as the apple of thine eye. And the laws of God as the apple of his eye. So it has to be the apple of our eye. The law's got to be what we want to do. Instead of us looking back into the world wanting to be like the rest of everybody else that we know, as far as like your family, your cousins and them, all of the friends you will, or people, I ain't going to say friends, the people you went to high school with and college with and stuff, they out there wilding out. Let them. They going to have their day. But you go out there with them, you going to have yours. And yours going to be worse because you knew better. And you went out there and did it. You actually was shown what not to do and you ignored it. And you ignored it. Uh, let's go to... Let's go to Colossians 3 and 5. We almost done. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Uh-huh. Mortify, therefore, your members, which are upon earth, the earth. They say mortify your members, meaning cut off. Go ahead. Fornication. Uh-huh. Uncleanness. Uh-huh. Inordinate affection. Evil concupiscence. And covetousness, which is idolatry. That, we, don't, that is idolatry. It's like it said. That's why when we read it earlier in Ezekiel 14 and 3, it said we've set up idols in our minds. We've set up idols in our minds because all of those things are idolatry. Fornication, you just made a woman above God. Or you made a man above God. Some of you make your children above God. Some of you make money above God. Read that verse again. Mortify, therefore, your members uh -huh. which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence. Go ahead. And covetousness. And covetousness. Go ahead. Which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. Matter of fact, let's read that again. Go back to Ezekiel 14 and 3. Go back to Ezekiel 14 and 3. Ezekiel chapter 14. And verse 3. And verse 3. Mm -hmm. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. They said our people put a stumbling block in front of their own face and have set up idols in their own minds. Go ahead. 
Should I be inquired of of at all by them? How are we going to inquire of God? And when it says inquire of God, right? How do you how do you inquire of God when you're not occupied in the Bible? Because you put other idols before God, you're not going to read the Bible and inquire of God. Where is that at? Uh, uh, no, inquire. Inquire of me. Is it Isaiah 30, 34, 16? Isaiah 34, 16. How are you going to inquire of God when you ain't even in the Bible? So when it says, shall they even inquire of me? No, you're not going to be able to do it. Read that. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. How you going to do that when you're not occupied in the Lord? It says, should they even inquire of me? How are you going to seek God out of the book of the Lord? How? Go ahead. No one of these shall fail. Uh huh. None shall want her mate. Go ahead. For my mouth it have commanded, and his spirit it have gathered them. There you go. So how are you going to inquire when you set up other idols in your mind? So therefore, you're not going to study like you used to. And shoot, this is for me. You know, sure. You know, like sometimes, like you say, man, hey, and, and everybody go through it where they kind of fall back for like, you're like, oh, wait a minute now. Let me, 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 me get my mind right now. Because brothers and sisters, it's, 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 a, it's a fight that goes on over and over, but it is the true repentance that we're trying to get to. That repentance where we are not dabbling and in, in playing around with the sins that pull us away from God. We can't seek for the Lord if we're putting other idols in our own minds. We cannot do it. You can't inquire of God if that's the case, if that's what you're doing. All right. Uh, go to. Let me see. Let me see. Second Ezra's. Second Ezra 14 and 34. Second Ezra, because this is what we want. I'm almost done. This is what we want. Second Ezra. Matter of fact, no. Uh, let's go to Corinthians. Let's go to Corinthians. Second Corinthians. We'll come back to Second Ezra right after this. Second Corinthians chapter it says all things be made new. Uh, five and five and seventeen. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Uh -huh. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. Old things are passed away. It says old things are passed away. So when we come into this truth, old things are passed away. Why go back and add those old things back to your life when God has, he don't see them no more? Why would you go back and bring those old things with you again when God already said they're gone? Wipe clean. You start over fresh when you come in here. Why would you then go back again to pull them? Go ahead. Old things are passed away. Uh huh. Behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. All go to Acts thirteen, Acts three and nineteen, Acts three and nineteen. Then, yeah, we almost done. Acts chapter three, verse nineteen. Mm -hmm. Repent ye therefore. And be converted. And we have to be converted. So we must repent. It said, repent ye therefore and be converted. Go ahead. That your sins may be blotted out. And that's what we all want. We all want our sins to be blotted out. So let's look. Let's put the definition up here. I'm glad y'all put it up there because I was rolling. I All praise to the most high. Let's put the definition of repent up there. Read that. Read that for me. Oh, this brother ain't got that. Golly. Blow it up a little bit. There we go. That's good. That's good. The definition of repent. Feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or sin. So we have to have a sincere regret. Go scroll down. Scroll down. Uh, yeah, read that one right there, the, the, that second bullet point. Second bullet point, mm -hmm. view or think of an action or omission with deep regret or remorse. So that's how we have that that right there. That that's on the worldly on the worldly sin. Like you said, just because we feel the regret, that means we should not do it again. Uh, scroll. Let's get the similar words right there. Let's read those. Similar words: feel remorse for, regret, be sorry for, rule, 
reproach oneself for, mm-hmm. be ashamed of, feel contrite about, be penitent, see the error of one's ways. See the error of one's ways. We have to see the errors of our ways. All right? We must see the errors of our ways. There's no way we can repent if we don't see the problems that we got. We cannot do it. So in order for us to repent, we must understand what we are doing wrong and not looking at everybody else. All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter eight, uh, chapter 7, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8. Uh-huh. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. So this is Paul talking to the Corinthians. Go ahead. Though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle had made you sorry, uh-huh. though it were but for a season. Go ahead. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, mm-hmm. but that you were, but that you sorrow to repentance. It said that we sorrow to repentance. Some people will, will feel sorrowful and don't and don't change anything. They just sorry that they got caught. We should be whenever some whenever we are found to be in error, whether uh, someone else points it out or you pick it up on yourself, you should sorrow unto repentance. Not just, you know what, I got caught. You know how they say in the world, you was just sorry because you got caught. And a lot of people in the truth feel that way. Only because somebody says something to them, they only sorry because they're going to go and turn around and do the exact same act. Sorrow unto repentance, like the scriptures say, to where we leave off from it. Go ahead. Now I rejoice. Not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. Uh-huh. For you were made sorry after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us in nothing. There you go. So we have to be made sorry after a godly manner, not after the worldly sorrow. Because all they do is say sorry and go do it again. We have to be sorry and don't meddle with it no more. That is what we got to strive to do. All right, go to 2 Edges 14, 34 now. 2nd Edrus chapter 14, verse 34. Uh-huh. Therefore, if, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding mm-hmm. and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive. We should be kept alive. Let's see. And, and it ain't talking about kept alive while you in this earthly body. We're going to prove it. Go ahead. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. So after death, we're going to obtain mercy. That's where we're going to be kept alive. Go ahead. For after death shall the judgment come. Uh-huh. When we shall live again, uh-huh. and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest. Go ahead. And the works of the ungodly shall be declared. And the works of the ungodly shall be declared. So if we're keeping the commandments, we shall live forever. And that's what we all want. So we have to repent and turn from our own understanding and change our minds according to what the Bible say. Go to... Uh, what was that on that right there? Yeah, matter of fact, watch this. Jump jump down to 49. Let me give you an example. No, Psalms, yeah, 49 is fine. Let's jump down to 49. I'm going to give you an example. Give you an example. Uh, Go to 2nd Ezra, not 14, is it 16 and 49? 16 and 49. 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 49. This right, here, this right here is an example of what the women in the world really be doing. Go ahead. Like as a whore envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman. Read that again. Like as a whore envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman. So it said the whore envies the righteous and honest woman. She wants to be you. She's at her, everybody running through her. That's why she say ain't no good men. Why do they say it's not any good men? Because they want one. So they envy what you have while you looking at their life uh, online. What's the little game that they be popping, the little balloon and stuff? And you, what is it talking about, the balloon dating joint? I don't know what the name of it is, but those of you that be online, you know what I'm talking about. They be popping the balloon trying to date all these, as they call them, choice men and stuff like that, or choice women, and they pop the balloon if they don't like something about them or what have you. So you have... Women online looking at these men wishing it was them. And all these hoes out here want to be you when you got a husband. You live in righteous. You got a whole family to support you. 
You got a whole congregation looking after your safety, looking after your well-being. And if you got children, we all looking after your children, too, together. And and they want what you have, but you looking at them wanting what they got. Go to Psalms, Psalms 37, 1 through 3. I know I said I was almost done. I think I am. <laughs> Psalms 37, verse 1. Yeah. Psalms chapter 37, verse 1. Uh-huh. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Mm-hmm. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Say we cannot be envious of the sinners. We cannot be envious of what they're doing where it looks all pleasurable to them. And they having it, as they call it, living their best life. We can't be looking at it like that. Reason why? Read on. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass uh-huh. and wither as the green herb. They're going to be put to death. And they're going to die that second death that we was reading about in Second Ezra. Go ahead. Trust in the Lord. That's what we got to do. We have to trust in the Lord. You So you single mothers that's waiting on the husband, trust in the Lord. Keep the commandments. Be humble. Wait. In your patience, possess ye your soul. Be patience. Be patient. Show some patience. For the brothers that's wait, waiting to get married and stuff, be patient. Don't be thinking I'm going to go out here in the world and, and get me a sister and, and bring her in. Who says she going to come in? Ain't nothing governing her thoughts. You go out there and, and start messing with her, she'll destroy your life. We've seen it. But that's what our brothers and sisters are out here really, really struggling against. That lust that you see, you're online every day. Then all of a sudden you get a message from them on your Facebook Messenger or on your Instagram Messenger or, or what have you. What is it you said? Snapchat? Yeah, Snapchat. All of that stuff. Watching your OnlyFans and everything else. All because we're not putting our trust in the Lord. Read that again, verse 3. Verse 3. Uh-huh. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. And that's what we got to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do and do good. We have to trust in the Lord and do good. Keep the commandments and faith in Christ. And it said we'll dwell in the land. Then we get to go home. Get to get our land. Now, let's go, let's go to Philippians 3. Philippians 3 and 13. Philippians. Chapter 3 and verse 13. Go ahead. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, uh -huh. forgetting those things which are behind. So forget those things that are behind you. Don't go back into the stuff you used to do. Go ahead. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Reach forth to the kingdom. Because that's what we, we understand that's what's before us. The people in the world don't get that. They're going to get their judgment. We just read that. So we don't need you being envious of that. Because they're going to get theirs. But if you go out there with them, you're going to get theirs with them. Go ahead. Verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And we pressing toward the mark. We trying to get the kingdom. That is what we pressing toward for. So we must let all those things go. That, that evil and repent change our minds. We cannot be playing around and making provisions because if we do, we're going to get that same judgment as we've read multiple times in the class. Let's go to Hebrews. Close out Hebrews 2 and 1. Hebrews 2 and 1. I always like to end with this verse. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Yes, sir. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, uh -huh. lest at any time we shall let them slip. So it said, listen, take heed to what the commandments are saying. Take heed to what the commandments is saying and don't let these things slip because if we do, you're going to end up falling into those things that you're lusting after after with your eyes online or at work. You got the, uh, the, 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 the work wife, work husband and all of that crap. If you do not repent and fix those things, they're going to destroy you and they're going to bring you to an open shame. The thing, so, and matter of fact, I missed the scripture. I forgot one. I didn't write it down, and I said I was going to come. I told myself I was going to come back to it, and I should have said it out loud. Go to 2 Corinthians. Uh, th 
13 and 5. That's what I want. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. In order for us to get rid of that sin, we must do this right here. We must do this. Read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Uh -huh. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. So we must examine ourselves. Go ahead. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? So we have to know ourselves. In order for us not to stick close to the sin, we have to know our own triggers. So we have to know ourselves to be able to avoid those things that will cause us to go off. Go ahead. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. Except we be reprobates. So if we're not examining ourselves, we're reprobate. If we can't admit to ourselves we're in our wrong, we're reprobate. So we have to first be able to judge ourselves and be able to say, you know what, I'm tripping, I'm bucking. The only way you can turn away from your sins is you have to examine yourselves to know what sins you are in. And then you have to be honest, like we said earlier, walking honest. So we have to be honest with ourselves and actually turn from those things. But the only way we'll do that is examine ourselves and be truthful. So Lord's will, y'all got something from the class with that. We say shalom, most high Christ bless. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 